case of the whole world. You've heard of many testimonies abound, like a brother who took his wife, worried by sickness to a native doctor, and the native doctor looked at this man and said, look, are you not a member of God? He said, yes. Say, what do you want in my house? Go away here. Do you want to go and destroy my means of livelihood? Pointed to the picture of the father. Say, look, that's the source of my food, the source of all the power. And then you've got it, you come here to destroy. Go away, don't come in here. Now, the truth of it is that you do not know what the Holy Spirit has done into you because you've been so changed, so empowered by the Holy Spirit that you are indeed stronger than even the rock of Gibraltar. All what we need to do now, all our own duty for each and every one of us is only to sing and rejoice and that's all. For if you say that he has done what is promised to them, and indeed he has fulfilled his promises to us, because he promised to change us, and now indeed he has changed us. Those who are not yet changed are those who are still staining their hands in evils and other atrocities of life, and because of this, they are yet to be changed. The golden text now be read. The golden text now be read. The golden text now be read. A golden pair came from the second epistle general of Peter, chapter 3, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blunder, speak no blood in Christ. Well, because you expect these things, since you have hope for these things, be diligent in peace and blameless and spotless. Why we give you this uh, teaching is because every other thing else has been accomplished. There's nothing more left except to change you. And that's why we are insisting, hammering, that you should abstain from all manners of sinfulness so that he would change you. To change you from death unto life, to change your body from the incorruptible to the mortal life, that you will live above death and be free from all other predicaments. <laughs> All what we do daily is so that he could change us. Amen. What he had promised for us all is for him to change us. So no need you looking for material things, looking here and there, because everything material has already existed. What is left is that as soon as he changes you, that's all. So yeah, And so wherever in the family, among the drugs with children, wherever you are. What I've been promised is to change you.
great world, I cannot put on shoe for any person for nothing. And because here he has changed us, that's why he has instructed that since you have hope for these things, be diligent, walk in peace, be blameless and spotless, so that you might be worthy and be like him. Amen. All those who have hope in him make the same holy even as he is holy. And as you are being changed, as you then give yourself holy, you have no association. No connection anymore with drinking. You have no connection again with fornication or any other vices. You be holy and shall be like him for him to change you that you would be like him in our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is why when our Lord Jesus Christ invited that brother the brother said, yes, master, I will follow you, but please excuse me to go home and bury my dead father. And Lord Jesus Christ in reply told him, uh, let the dead bury the dead, you go and preach the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. We have no business with fornication or adultery. We have no business with drunkenness or uh, being drunk. We have no business with shoe. We have no business with all those that vices. Anything sinful, all those kind of way of living the kind of glory. We have no business whatsoever because we have been so changed. We have completely expunged ourselves from all those vices and therefore no business anymore. That's all. Amen. We have no business to do things so as to please the world. We have nothing to look for the glory of the world to please the world. Our life now is exclusively in God. To be in God and to be where Christ is, to do things so that we will be changed and we will be like him and shall be with him in our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, we take you no further, for it said that stroke of the king is not for the wise. Let us have ears here and may the fire bless his words.
proclamations you should be very careful and mindful of the words that proceed out of my mouth and get informed that not even a tittle or a jot out of my words shall remain unfulfilled they will certainly have to be consummated for even before now all my words have always come to pass I have warned you time without number and I'm right here to repeat this warning unto you that you must not at any time here make any noise. We do not attend to any form of lousiness or rowdiness. I am not used to that and I wouldn't want that to continue. I have warned you that any time you want to move out, you should move out in a very humble manner. Make sure that you show all your reverence to the Holy Spirit. Don't make noise. Don't scramble for food. Don't scramble for anything. Otherwise, this glory shall be taken away from you and given to the generation that shall bear good fruits. I want to let you know, sin, I do not need a devilish incarnate person here. For it is said, the reverence of God is the beginning of his wisdom. And I want to let you know that you are still wanting to be tied to the apron strings of old. That is at all times to shoot trouble, to cause confusion, to move in and have a that manner. That is not a manner uh, I desired by me. Because the people of old had done that and you want to throw the footprints of the people of old. Get you fully informed that many had died for the sake of this kingdom. If 
Israel died, not for any other thing, but for the sake of this, the glory of God. John died. His head was beheaded. Many of the prophets and patriarchs of old became annihilated, all for the sake of this glory. But ye have been called here just on a platter of gold. Why can't you receive the fact that you are being saved by grace? And it is not through your righteousness, not because ye are worthy, not because ye are able to run the race, but because I have just come so that I may call on you, the sinners, to come to true repentance. Why do you continue to make noise as though you do, will not want to recognize the deity which is in your midst? I have suffered enough for your sake. There is nothing I have not been subjected unto. Humiliation, kajo, mercury, torture, blasphemy, all because of this kingdom, so that ye may enjoy. Why can't you receive this and then come back? Read the take stock of all the things you do. Do you know how much is being expended before this kingdom can stand up till this time? Do you know how much it takes before you can see the light of the day even coming here in this kingdom? But you still will not want to receive and then accept that I continue to warn you so that you may enjoy this kingdom. You will be ostracized and when I say this, it will surely come to pass. I have not done this before, but I want to tell you, if you continue to be recalcitrant to my orders and regulations and be so insubordinate to my injunctions, well, you will have yourself to blame. I want you to know that whosoever receives this word and would not put them into practice will then have himself to blame. That is the reason why our Lord Jesus the Christ, at any given time, he has explained his word unto his disciples. He will not forget to tell them, he who has the ears to hear, let them hear. It is in the same wise that I am telling you in this end of time, that at all times I give you my word, and I would wish that you come to a true repentance, receive them, put them into practice, for a stroke of care is always sufficient unto a wise. Those who have the ears to hear, let them hear. Those who bear good fruit and are ready to assimilate my words and put them into practice and project the, my image, they shall inherit this kingdom. Otherwise, because the trance is not condoned here, the people who for, for me trouble are not condoned here. We only preach unto you that you should love one another. You should forsake sin. You should not double into fornication, preparations of concoctions and diabology. But you will not want to attend to this. All the things I ask you not to do, these are the things you claim unto. But you want to completely separate yourself and would not do those things I ask you to do. Why? I warned you once again, beware of yourself. For this is a divine place where righteousness only prevails. And those who hearken unto my instructions shall inherit this place. Those who are insubordinate shall completely be ostracized, receive and be saved, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Good match you 25. Bang I told you, bang I told you, my mu yum. Eben vin to open the web map and you could say I'm for me and I can I I have conducted a little bit of my drama even at 26 Mbupa. Recall when members used to come here with their trinkets and all their being dressed even to the tune of the Edem. But one day it was revealed that all those things shall be completely pushed away from them. And it do, did 
come to pass even as I proclaimed. For one day, all their trinkets, bangles, and all that they had dressed to a tune of their dam became completely extracted from them. I want to tell you that for about 2,000 years now, all my words have to certainly come to pass, for they have lived and abided by them, and this will continue to be made manifest and be shown unto people. For you to confirm that all my words are of the truth, and when I declare, no other person alters. Read Matthew chapter 25. 25 from verse 31. From verse 31 to the end. With Matthew, it will be to turn to our telephonicals here. Everybody <laughs> Kemeri <laughs> Shepherd divided the sea, 
from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on the left. Then shall the king say to them, then shall the king say to them, to his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hunger, for I was hunger, ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me drink. I was stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, ye clothed me. I was sick, ye visited me. I was in prison, ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when so we the hunger and we feed thee, or thirsty and give thee drink. When so we the stranger and to the inn, or naked and clothe thee. Or when so we the sick or in prison and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto him, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of this my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also, to them, for his left and depart from me, he caused into everlasting fire, prefer for the devil and his anger. For I was hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me no drink. I was stranger, ye took me not in. Naked, ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when so we the uncle and test or stranger or naked or sick or in prison did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them saying, Very I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And they shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Peace in our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 13, 50. 49 and 50. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and survey the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, which shall be whirling and gnashing of teeth. Peace in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Have you heard that? Everybody example for you to emulate. You can see there had never been a time even when he is being exposed to Bible class, divine Bible lectures of the Holy Spirit, he is never given into making any comments or getting up to uh, bring up his idea because he shows all humility and reverence unto the Holy Spirit and most so he came here only to receive learning. But about you, troubleshooter, a troublemonger, you won't even learn from him. You come about making trouble here and there. Another example is this uh, white Indian who is here. He is a lecturer, but that is not enough for him. He is here to be taught by the Holy Spirit. And you can see him always sitting down and looking cool and calm because he is only here to receive his teachings from the Holy Spirit. And so, no matter what you do, I will not ostracize you, for everything must meet their fullness of time. It is only time factor. 
It might be you are doing this so that I'll be carried out and do a thing I wouldn't do before the fullness of time. It will only come to pass at an exact time given. If you must receive condemnation, it has to be at the fullness of time. It will not come before time. For this is all being written and sealed by me. And so, look at in the time past. You only succeed in coming here to create trouble, to laugh at random, to begin to make mockery at a certain words that I speak. Some time ago I told you there shall be in existence the bench of the children of God. But you will love me to scorn. You, this, you never believe that it will certainly manifest itself. What has happened today? Look at the number of children of God recorded here in the kingdom of God. And many more are coming. Two are on the waiting list, about three. One has gone back to complete his education. So many of them are coming. And what can you still say? Will you still love to scorn? Right now, interview does not take the shape of the time it has gone by. Formerly, it was that when somebody is going to be ushered, it might be just within one and two days the interview will be conducted and then report will be sent to the father and he will or she will be ushered. But right now, it takes a period of time for about one month or two months before such a person will exert. This is as it is ordained by me. What are you going to do towards this? You still go about making trouble. I am now warning you strictly, without missing words, if you have come here only to be causing trouble, only to be creating problems, only to be making a nuisance of yourself, only to constitute a devil unto others, you will never be allowed to be here. Only those who will abide by my rules, injunctions and commandments, I tell you, these are the people who will see the face of my day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who still will not bless your marriage, but will desire to only be hate on the wrong side of it. When these people shall pass through in, into the kingdom, through the gateway, you will only succeed in getting in there through the orthodox, and that can never be condoned. I tell you, continue to live a humble life for and imitate the Christ students who have saved here for 24 years. These people understand what it takes to become a child of God and they will never want to be hate. So why do you make a hell of noise and always want to be hate, even in your emptiness? That's all. The bishop I can sanction your notion that men could be equal is only as we go to eat our feast. Because you pick a plate and the other man picks a plate. You handle that spoon and probably after you finish the other person takes it and handles it. That's the only area that we can say, well, all men are equal in this kingdom. There is a great deal of class distinction. For you cannot stand here to contest with a bishop. And when the bishop talks to you, you begin to want to contest him. For what reason? 
Can you not recognize rank and file of position or seniority? It is like a class student who should talk with you and you begin to contest with him. Or a class witness to talk to you and you begin to contest with him. For what reason can you not be afraid of something even at this time that you have seen yourself? Man, why can't you be content with the position I have kept you? You have the ears you cannot hear. You have the eyes you cannot see. I want to tell you that the blessed brothers and sisters, you cannot equalize yourself with them. And when they stand out here to testify or to do anything, you have no right even to have a say. Your ideas are not needed because these are the people whose marriages have been blessed by our Father Almighty himself. So I want you right from now till eternity to know and discard your misconceptions that all men are equal because there are some areas that you are equal with another man. There are some equal, uh, areas that you live to become a houseboy unto the other person. I can you also say you're equal with him? Uh, he is a chairman national Christ natural crusade uh, brotherhood world uh, and what are you are you a chairman also can you contest with him can you measure up your capability your capability with that of his you cannot because he's not the same as you and you cannot even measure up as far as integrity is concerned now, men are not equal. Why should you think that you are equal with some other person? Is it because you are a very good troubleshooter or you are a very good troublemonger or because you go about creating confusion here and there? Now that you specialize in creating confusion and making trouble here and there, is the other person that you think is equal with you making the same trouble? Is that, can you now say that you are equal with him or he is equal with you? You are only a troublemaker and the other person is not a troublemaker. He is that person who shows humility and re uh, reverences the Father. And so I want to tell you the word that, and stay away from unworthy are equal with the other person. The other person is a member of the fellowship, he's an executive, national-wise, he is there. When you talk about something else, he is there to show his capability and uh, personality. But you can never do anything. You are not recognized, you are not seen, you don't even attend any fellowship. You don't even come when it is time that people are being registered. How can you continue to misconstrue that you are equal with the other person? No way, you are not, no matter how you must try. All you need to do, sit cool and humble yourself, be taught of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Men 
bragging mouth, they have no money, they belong to no fellowship, they have no ability to perform anything good to the glory of the Father. They only use your, their mouth to despise other people. Those people that have money to uh, uh, glorify the Father or help anybody, they use their mouth to make sure that this, they despise such people here in this kingdom. They'll only see something bad, they'll only talk of something which is bad, they'll only make sure that they use their mouth in despising one another. But for them to have any ability to perform anything good, no, that's not found in them. So you who is here, make sure you take time and be aware of all those things that you do here in this kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ.